Hi, lady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Oh my. Got a lot to say. Got a lot to say, but nobody's watching yet. Oh, there's some people. Good morning, everybody. It's Brittany at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. Here with Priya. Hey, Deb. Hey, Susan. Here with your girl, Miss Priya. Notice she was not down by the lake. I'm a little bit later today. Hey, Cindy. Hi, Bob. Yep, this beautiful tiger is Priya Tiger. Hey, Robin. She has a nest cam on her that you can watch, and you'll actually see her quite a bit because she does hang up here at the front where all the keepers are. She's taking me on a walk. I was going to give it a few minutes for everybody to start joining and then I can do a little rundown about all the cats everybody are wondering about. We have some hospital cats. Lots of activity in the last ugh, week. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Lisa. I'm not sure if that's Carol or Luana, but good morning. Good morning, Chris. We're here with Miss Priya. Hey, Ashley. Thanks for posting her bio link, Dub. We do have bio pages for each of the cats that live here at Big Cat. For most of them, it's just bigcatrescue.org slash their name. But occasionally, just occasionally, there's like an extra hyphen or a number or... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. She's up and moving because this is day two of Panicure. I'm a little later today because I helped feed this morning. I got a cute video of Jasmine and Cyrus while I was feeding because I just couldn't resist. Everybody's been asking about Cyrus and how he's handling his much bigger neighbors. And I got a little bit of it on video this morning. It's pretty cute. I agree, Lori. Um, <laughs> It's really hard for me to film a cat that's up here because I miss Seth so much, but Priya is a breath of fresh air, that's for sure. How can you not love Priya? So the cats are very active because they are having panicure and that meant Sunday was fasting and then yesterday was the first day and they get much smaller amounts of food to ensure that they actually take the medication. You showing them how your enclosure works? So she was just out in the open air enclosure. Now she's in her roof section where she gets fed. So you hear that rattling? That is a food cart going by. Thank you, Lisa, for your donation. You can see she can walk through tunnels and doors. She can go right back out the other door. And she's gonna hopefully follow Dylan and Carla and see if they have any extra snacks. <laughs> Panicure is a three-day process, so tomorrow will be the last day. And then they'll go back to their regular full diets and all the operant treats and all that fun stuff. And there she goes. See if she circles back. If not, we'll walk next door and see if we can see Duchess. I've just been trying to hold off on all the updates so that I'm not repeating myself over and over and over again. That can't be fun to watch. <laughs> so I'm just kind of waiting until our numbers get where they kind of normally are. And then I'm going to give you guys an update on all of the hospital cats. For the last week, we've been extremely busy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Extremely busy, extremely stressed. Nope, don't want that end. There we go. Uh, so Panicure is a quarterly um, intestinal, uh, it's like a dewormer. So we actually treat with ivermectin once a month, Panicure quarterly, and flea treatment Brevecto is also quarterly, and that goes in their food. All right, let's go see what Miss Queen Bee is up to. And then I'll give you guys an update on everybody else. Oh, she's looking beautiful on her platform over there. So if you guys watch 
bigcatcams.com. If you go to that, you can watch any of our nest cams. Hopefully she'll just stay up there. I don't want to ruin what everybody's probably seeing on Explore right now. Oh, there she goes. No, you can stay there. I did not bring anything fun. It's just a camera. She's gonna get into pounce mode though. <laughs> Gotta find the right angle. And then hope that the zoom works. Yay! There's Duchess. Ooh, and a spider hanging on her side. Okay, so we've had a busy week. Uh, last Thursday night, 4th of July, we found Ginger Serval um, had either jumped or fallen off of something and broke her leg. That finally got all fixed up by Friday night. She's doing really well. Um, she is in the hospital. We've got her on a camera. I'm not sure if we have, not all cameras are going to be public because we only have so many cameras and we only have so much uh, Wi-Fi power. So Ginger Serval is in the recovery hospital nursing a broken back leg, but she's doing really well, being a good patient. She's still in her e-collar. She's eating. She's taking her meds. And I'm just giving you an update on cats that you're not looking at. This is Duchess Tiger. So that's Ginger's report. She's doing well. Uh, yesterday we took Thurston or Mr. Howell, he's a bobcat, into the hospital because it was noted that he had a lump on his back right uh, ankle. So Dr. Justin did take fluid out of it. It was fluid filled. Um, took fluid out. We're sending that out for results. And while he was in, he got the full workup. Um, he hadn't been seen since arriving, which was about six years ago. We only take the cats in the hospital when it's an absolute emergency because sedating them is very hard on them. Um, but he's also doing really well, being a really good patient, back to being his cute, growly little self. Um, so we're just waiting on his results, but he's also eating, taking his meds. He will probably be in there just a couple of days. Ginger will be in there much longer. So Thurston's doing well. And then you guys probably saw we were live like all day yesterday. Um, <laughs> we also gave Cinder, one of our rehab bobcats, um, one of her vaccines. She's about 14 weeks old now. so. She was due for a vaccine, so we went out and did that live. We did check in on Flint. Um, Flint is another rehab bobcat. He's currently in the rehab bobcat hospital. We moved him from his smaller enclosure into a full-sized room um, where we're monitoring. Uh, Afton did a lot of filming in there yesterday to get footage of him walking. Um, he's been favoring a front right um, paw and like wrist area. So, but he is improving. I mean, when he first arrived, uh, Flint was just kind of dragging himself around. He does get up on all four feet now, but he's definitely still walking strangely. Um, so we will be sending that uh, video to specialists to see what we can do for him. So that's a report on Ginger and Thurston, Cinder and Flint. And then everybody's big question is Sapphire. Sapphire is a white tiger. She's estimated to be about nine years old. Um, we don't officially know uh, for sure, but through the records that we received, we believe she's about nine. She was seen back on May 18th for some dental work along with, um, they found a mass on her forehead. Let's see if we can move where we see her. Duchess's pretty face. <laughs> so um, she was doing pretty good right right afterwards although it was a really rough wake up for her. She woke up fast from the last sedation but she flipped out. Um, she was you know doing circles uh, in the in the transport cage and it was very scary. So yesterday she was seen because for the last um, several days she's been acting very lethargic. She basically completely stopped eating or Afton was maybe able to get a pound of food in her at most. 
So we saw her yesterday. Um, there is a live for all of that, and Dr. Justin actually breaks down her blood work and her x-rays um, very specifically in that video. I'm not a vet. I don't always understand the terminology, so I do recommend you um, catching up on all of those from yesterday. You can watch those at facebook.com slash wildcatwalkabout. But her kidney values were a little alarming. Um, her white blood cell count was also a bit alarming, especially comparing it to just a few weeks ago in May. So those were concerning. She got over six bags of fluid yesterday, um, some antibiotics as well. Um, as soon as we saw her starting to kind of come out of the sedation yesterday, we did roll her back out to the enclosure. She's going to be moving enclosures. She's no longer going to be considered out back. Um, well, technically she's in Outback still, but she's going to be in Cameron and Zabu's old enclosure. When Kali comes home from vacation, she's due to go back in Tiger Row next to Keisha, where we all really liked having her there. And she is fully awake. Um, she had a pretty calm wake up this time around, very just sleepy, um, but she's up and moving. I'm not going to go out to Sapphire because we are trying to keep everybody away and just let her fully wake up on her own but she is out in um, that enclosure now walking around doing pretty good but she's not um she's still very skittish i guess we'll say that so the last thing we want to do is spook her so she like runs into the side of the cage or anything like that so again you can catch up on every single live that i do uh, all of the updates that carol um, will do for the coordinator reports and other updates all of that posts at facebook.com slash wildcat walkabout. So Sapphire's actually doing pretty well. She's too busy to eat food so far this morning, but she's up and moving. So that's really, really good. And this is just Sleepy Duchess. You can also watch her and Priya if you go to bigcatcams.com. You'll see a Tiger Lake camera. Oh, flop. So that is the updates. Um, I will wander around and show you some of the other cats that are close to us. But if you start seeing people in the comments asking the same questions that I just answered over and over again, please feel free to fill them in on that. That would be wonderful. I can't imagine it's fun for people that don't get to watch our lives very often to watch them. Here you go, Deb and then um, <laughs> just hear me say the same three things over and over again. So those are our hospital cat updates. If you came in in the middle or missed it, you can go to those pages to rewatch. And thank you, Deb. Yes, dailybigcat.com is also a page that you can catch up on all of that. Oh, here's King Tut. We'll go around and get get a better angle at him. Bear with me while I get the gate here. And then I'm also going to try to show you guys Breezy. I believe Carol posted one of that update. Um, also in one of her reports. It could be wrong. It could all be blending together. It's been a crazy week. Here's Tut. But we'll go see Breezy as well. Breezy's a 23-year-old bobcat that lives here. Some toe beans from King Tut. And she was witnessed um, over the weekend having about a two-minute seizure. She had one a couple years ago as well. Recovered well and um, the great thing about that is that somebody saw it, was able to capture it on video. That way our vets have a very clear idea of what happened. And then shortly after that, Breezy actually did eat food. She's been playing with enrichment. She's um, been coming out for her afternoon sickles. Hi, Tutters. Oh, look at those big claws. So this is King Tut, he's a savannah cat. A lot of the cats I'm talking about are not the ones you're physically looking at, so I apologize if that's confusing. <laughs> it's been very hot and humid and rainy and just kind of yuck out here, but 
cats have been actually doing just fine with it. Mm, I don't think you hear Beecher in the background because he's really far away. If you hear a Savannah, the closest one to us is Simba. But he had breakfast already and he's less, <laughs> less chatty with a full belly. Looks like Perfection's already tucked in on top of her platform. Let's try to see if we can see Breezy. We spent a lot of time with Perfection actually in a live last week, so again, one of those things you can always go back and rewatch. Not in that den. I try to mix it up and show you guys different cats all the time. Especially the cats that if you came on a tour, you probably wouldn't see because they're very shy. She might be tucked in a den. Or in her ferns. We'll walk her enclosure and see if we can find her though. Where's my breezy girl? He is tucked away somewhere. Sorry, I'm spinning you guys around. I'm looking at the cage, not really the camera. Oh, there's that sweet girl. I knew you had to be over there. Hi, pumpkins. This is Breezy. I know, I didn't bring any good treats. I'm sorry. But you're giving us a treat so we see your beautiful face. She's also still been coming out for grooming with Karma. Kitten Karma has Breezy as a grooming cat, so that's why even in her old age, she doesn't have a lot of mats on her. We use long retractable scratchers in order to, we can call the cats over to the side, and then we're able to use this little, it almost looks like a little claw or a little hand, a little comb on the end. Hi, Breeze. Such a good girl. Who gave us a scare? Who did? Again, though, she's 23 years old. A few times the cat's aged by six. Now you see why I had trouble finding her. <laughs> Immediately gone. All right, Breezy, you have a good day. Got a little bobcat tail. All right. Oh, there's Andy. Andy Bob. She doesn't know I'm here, so I don't want to scare her. Hi. Hi, cute girl. Andy Bob's another one of our Miracle Bob cats. A little over a year ago, we believe she had a stroke. She's also in her early 20s. She was very wonky for a while, but has kind of since come back around, come back to normal. Well, Lisa, some of the cats tolerate uh, the grooming with the scratcher, but a lot of them actually do not. I notice with the much larger cats, um, it seems to be a lot easier to get them used to it. But with the small cats, and specifically bobcats, they just don't want to be touched. So it takes, if you're able to get them to come around to it, it takes a very long time. Lots of trial and error, lots of strikeouts. <laughs> I think I spent several days just walking up to Tiger Lily with the scratcher, giving her a sickle and just sitting there and talking to her, but never actually trying to groom her. And that went on for a while. Then it just turned to like, will you let this thing touch you? She'd shoot daggers out of her eyes. <laughs> several months of just hoping she'd allow it. And finally she did, but she, Tiger Lily still has areas on her. She just will not tolerate you using the scratcher. And Andy here will not allow anyone to scratch her. She unfortunately gets a lot of mats down the middle of her back. Yeah. 
So for any of you guys uh, asking all the questions I've already answered, um, while we were looking at Duchess, I answered every single uh, question and gave updates on all of the hospital cats, so you guys can rewatch this. Miss Andy, what are you looking at? Got a jungle in there. That's the way the bobcats like it, though. You crazy bobs. Oh, that was a crazy bird. We did start out with Priya. We saw Duchess. And we kind of worked our way around some of the bobcats. Now that we have seen our two oldest bobcats, we got to go see our oldest bobcat. See what Tiger Lily's doing. Of course, she's probably already napping. You never know. This is Lakota. Hi. I'm not going to get any closer. Not getting closer. This is Lakota Bobcat. Oh, that's probably like a meat delivery truck. A meat delivery truck. Where's Sue? Where's Sue? I've got a lot to say. Whoa. Miranda, we have a little, uh, just under 60 permanent residents here. Thank you, Miriam, for your donation. I really appreciate that. We have a variety of species. We have one ocelot all the way up to one lion and quite a few tigers. And then we do have a rehab and release program for native Florida bobcats. <laughs> Everyone is like, are you bringing new food? Oh, welcome, Samantha. Yeah, I love to see when people are brand new to watching the lives. Please feel free to ask any questions. I know sometimes it's a little hard to understand what you're seeing, and I have a lot of regulars in these feeds, so sometimes I might talk over new people's heads and them not understand what they're seeing, but this is Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. There she is. Now this is Tiger Lily. She is our oldest resident. She's a bobcat that's 24 years old. She's under this platform, so I just gotta get to a better place to see her. Hi, what are you doing in there? I know, it's muddy. You should probably go in your dry den. It's muddy. Hello, I'm coming over. Sweet old lady. She's gonna bat my camera. Where are you going? So with her, the area she just will not let me groom is right there under her chin. No, you gotta let me get those sometime. Are you ever gonna let me? Probably not. That's okay. I respect that. I'll get this camera. I'm making biscuits. Making some biscuits. Until she lays down. What a beautiful photo that is of you. Yeah. What a beautiful photo that is. Yeah. You both in. Boofing. Yep, she is our oldest resident. She's a little wide-eyed today, again, because they're like, did you bring more food? I know, but it's very important that you get medications, especially dewormers and flea treatment. Squeaking? Look at those 
little beast. So cute. He's dried and big and behind me. She every time she looks away from me, I feel like she's probably watching him behind me. Yeah, Lily used to be really fierce, like she would always immediately shoot to the side and give me a nice big growl and then she'd lay down and settle down. Now she just kind of does her little poof, 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 like you want to, you just don't do it no more. She most likely has cataracts. Again, she's 24 years old. She's about double what they would live in the wild. You cutest girl. What is the cutest girl? <laughs> She's making biscuits. She's making biscuits again. Every now and again. He's so cute. So cute. I think she shifts her eyes to get me to look behind me so she could pounce at me. <laughs> Is that a plan part part of your plan too? Yeah, we became friends, didn't we? Still don't trust you at all. You still got that crazy that crazy look in your eye like you're gonna get me. Always, oh yeah, always waiting on the opportunity. So cute. He makes you so cute. <laughs> uh, well, when I started here over four years ago, I told Tiger Lily we were going to be friends, so it looks like it worked out. For those of you that don't know the story with me and her is when I first started here, the very first cat that passed away was Levi, a bobcat that had lived uh, his whole life with Tiger Lily and several other bobcats. They used to live in a group of bobcats. I believe they were referred to as the crazy bobs. That was before my time though. But I just felt really sad um, thinking that, you know, Tiger Lily had lived with so many other cats for so long. She was all by herself. Um, when I started here, she had nicknames of the Ghost Kitty because nobody ever saw her. She always saw you, but you never saw her. People had been out here for years and said they'd rarely ever seen her. And my husband and I both just, we were like, we love Tiger Lily, because she'd sneak around behind us. You'd turn around from cleaning and she'd be sitting right there staring at you. And so we just started spending time with her. Every time I could, I'd give her a sickle or a spice bag. I'd just drive by and say hi to her all the time. And one day she just seemed to really take a liking. Thank you, Charlotte, for your donation. All right, lady, I don't want to walk away, but I, uh, I don't think I can hold this this low anymore. My hand's starting to shake. Yeah. So Tiger Lily is actually one of the very original cats. She was saved in the fur farm rescues that actually started Big Cat Rescue in the 90s. She was born in 1995. There we go. All right, my lady, we love you. I see you later. Sickles, sickles later. All right, let's see. Did Dryden sneak over? Nope, no Dryden. So she was just trying to trick me. <laughs> and so anyway, yeah, slowly over time, uh, my husband has her as an operant cat and she uh, does really, really well with him. And then just one day now she comes out for everybody. It's amazing. She comes right into lockout. She comes over for sickles for just about everyone. So she really came out of her shell, which is just awesome. You know, you don't like to have that kind of responsibility on you as a keeper that a cat will only respond to you. 
because what if there's an emergency and you're not there? Um, you know, you're at home or and I live almost an hour away. So I, it's really, really nice to know that these cats will... There's Kulona! Hi, Q! That these cats will eventually come out of their shell and trust other people. That's just really important to me. And Kulona is a perfect example of that. Uh, last evening I was driving home and Lauren Buckingham, who was the coordinator yesterday, sent me two of the cutest photos of Kilona. And she was like, I just, you've done such a great job with her. She came right out to Lauren last night and took her panicure in treats on a stick. Good job! Where are you going? Thought we'd see her walk over her catwalk. But I've also heard from a few other keepers that Kilona will run right into lockout for them, which is also something that hasn't been happening. So that's really, really important. We want, we want Kilona to feel comfortable here. And you're right, it's definitely all about patience. And it's funny, I've, I've never actually imagined myself as being a patient person. <laughs> I just like, I don't know, sometimes when I want something, I want it right now. Uh, yet somehow I've been able to dig deep <laughs> and bond with these bobcats. Where are you going? Where's Dryden? Oh, I see why she didn't go up there. They're still separated from breakfast. That makes sense. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, right into lockout because she wants more food. That's why. Hi, sweet girl. But every keeper out here has an incredible bond or an incredible story with the cats. We've got a, just an amazing team out here. I thought I heard Gilligan about ready to start calling. <laughs> Nala didn't give up on second breakfast. Yeah, Gilligan is calling. We'll walk over and I'll show you Gilligan, but since Nala's right here. Hi, Nala. Hi, cute girl. Hi, are we gonna be friends yet? I have been bringing Nala more enrichment lately. He doesn't always help though. So this is Nala. Nala is an African serval. She's right here being adorable. We'll go over to Gill again, and that's probably where we'll wrap up for today. I got lots to do. Getting very sleepy. Yeah, that was a very half-hearted hiss. <laughs> Maybe we're making improvement, but I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> All right, sweet lady. Yeah, there it is. Oh, but it's also a yawn. Oh, that was actually a really cute face. <laughs> okay, let me get unzoomed here. It's a little awkward. There we go. All right, let's go see what Gilligan's shouting about. Probably saying, please stop raining, Florida. That's not going to happen. We have a really unfortunate looking forecast over the next week of all rain. It's kind of why I wanted to make this a longer walk about today because I just can't guarantee how the rest of this week's going to be. Oh, and he's in a really cute place. Hopefully he'll stay there. What were you calling about, sir?
look how handsome. All right, let's try the zoom again. There's Mr. Gilligan in all his glory. Gilligan is a Canada Lynx. That rock wall area you see back there is actually air conditioned dens for him if he so chooses. And again, if you guys are new to us, you can always learn about each and every one of these cats. That helps, uh, helps you help other people in the comments when you know their backstories and ages and all that. You can go to bigcatrescue.org slash cat bio. Uh, Jimmy, they're native to Canada, so definitely the northern regions. Most lynx are in northern, colder environments, which is why we try to provide him air conditioning. Sadly, Gilligan was rescued from a horrible place in Kansas. So, not native to Kansas. Thank you so much to the three people that donated today and everybody that shared this feed. Anytime you share any of our things from Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or anything, uh, I'm working on our new Shopify store and hopefully it's gonna have a feature where you can share products straight from that website to your social media. All of that really, really helps the cats. And that's all a very free way for you guys to help the cats. If you guys came in late, you've missed a lot, so make sure you rewatch this one. Lots of hospital cat updates. We saw a lot of cats. We got a nice long hoo hoo from Gilligan. Gilly! So handsome. Look at that beard. I would love to see lynx in the wild. And I've still not seen a bobcat in the wild, but I've seen many bobcats be released back into the wild. And he's like, oh, is that, does that cart have food? Nope, no food. <laughs> but I can't take it for granted. I'm, I was incredibly blessed with seeing tigers in the wild in India. So that was unbelievable. We're hoping for a 2020 trip to Africa as well, so fingers crossed. I'm going to see these guys in the wild where they belong. Yeah, where you belong. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Hope you all have a beautiful day. Yeah, Wendy, every cat has that look of disappointment today. Again, I updated everybody earlier, but this is our Panicure um, week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they get slightly less food because we've got to ensure that they take their medicine. So, <laughs> so silly. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much, especially everybody who helped out in the comments. You guys are amazing. See you guys again soon.